Hello everyone and welcome to the first of three videos which examine the different functions of the Northern Ireland Assembly. I'm Dr Sean Hawkey, I'm a lecturer at the Institute of Irish Studies at the University of Liverpool. And these videos should be useful to A-level students in Northern Ireland undertaking the politics course and in particular these videos speak to the curriculum on the AS1 uh, module which amongst other things looks at the functions of the Assembly and the Executive. So this first video is going to look at the Assembly's representative function. And in terms of a representation, in terms of how we think of it or what it means, uh, it's useful to think of the word in a literal sense. So representation is when an elected official represents the views and concerns of citizens. So your MLA might be engaging with people in person at the constituency level, for example, at their constituency surgery on a Friday, or they could be engaging with constituents online through social media. And when they do that, they listen to those views and concerns and questions, and then they give expression to those things in the assembly, or they express those things to the executive. That is the process of representation and action. They are listening to people's views and they're representing them on the floor of the assembly or to a government minister or to the media, for example. Now, representation is particularly important in a divided society. And when we talk about a divided society, we usually mean a community, a society where we talk about more than one community. So there might be one community with its own distinct culture and religion, perhaps even language, and another community with a different religion or a different culture or a different language. Um, and historically, anyway, in Northern Ireland, we talk about the unionist and nationalist community. Um, and in divided societies, because there are different communities with very different views and sometimes different values, it's important that each of those groups, or the wide range of groups, they have their voices heard in the legislature and they have adequate representation. So to do that in Northern Ireland's case, to enhance the diversity of views in the legislature, we use proportional representation by the single transferable vote, or PRSTV for short. So instead of you electing one representative per constituency, and there will be limits to how representative that person can be, right? Because they might have a particular background or their own particular religion, for example. Instead, we elect a number of different members per constituency to enhance diversity. And in Northern Ireland's case, we elect five MLAs per constituency. Therefore, citizens get more representation from your vote because you're not just putting an X next to one candidate's name. In a PRSTV election, you're doing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, as far down the preference list as you like. And it's likely that a number of your preferred candidates will get elected. Therefore, you're getting more representation or more bang for your buck. And the use of, represent, the use of, of multi-member constituencies enhances the diversity of views within the constituency and enhances the diversity of views within the assembly overall. So if you look, for example, at the North Antrim constituency, there's five MLAs from five separate political parties. So it doesn't matter if you vote Alliance or DUP or TUV or Sinn Féin or the UUP, you have representation within that constituency. And that level of diversity is actually fairly unusual by international standards. PRSTV is also one of the most proportional electoral systems in the world, and by proportional we mean fairness in terms of the seats in the assembly reflecting um, the vote at the last election. So for example, at the last assembly election, Sinn Féin came out on top, they won 29% of the vote, and they got 30% of the seats in the assembly. So there's a very good matchup there between the percentage of the party's share, uh, the, the party's share of the vote, and the party's share of the seats. When we use different electoral systems, particularly majoritarian or first-past-the-post electoral systems, you don't get that level of fairness. There's more disproportionality or more unfairness. So, for example, at the last Westminster election in Northern Ireland, the DUP topped the poll. They got 31% of the vote or thereabouts in the Northern Ireland um, contest, but they got 44% of Northern Ireland's Westminster seats. So you can see there that the electoral system we use for the Assembly in addition to creating a diversity of views, it also is much more proportional than some other electoral systems. So there are some um, positive elements of the Assembly that speak to it being uh, representative in terms of the um, diversity of views that exist within Northern Ireland. In terms of your MLAs and how they can achieve representation or how they can go about representing your views, they have a number of tools at their disposal. 
First, they can participate in assembly debates, so they will stand up in the chamber and they can ensure that the views and concerns of their constituents are expressed in the assembly, that other MLAs hear their perspectives, and also that the media, um, and they all often pay attention to what goes on in the assembly, that the media are um, hearing those views as well. Your MLA could also table a private member's motion, so that's, that would appear on the parliamentary order paper as a specific item of business, and it's raising an awareness um, of a specific issue. Sometimes it'll call for action, so it asks a minister to do something about an issue in the constituency, for example, or it can recognise a particular organisation or an individual within the constituency. So say, for example, in your constituency, there's a particular charity that you think is doing very good work and deserves recognition. You could ask your MLA to table a motion to recognise the work of that charity. So you're getting your voice heard and the, voice, the voices of your constituency heard um, in a very concrete way. There is an example motion, um, a recent one, talking about the cost of living crisis by an Ulster Unionist MLA from East Belfast. Um, you can read that in your own time. Or thirdly, your MLA could ask a parliamentary question. So it could ask an oral question. So verbally ask a question of a minister during question time. Or it could table a written question. And these questions, they're important not just because they raise the profile of the issue, but also because they require a response from the minister. You can see an example of a written question there from an Alliance Party MLA that's asking about um, an empty building or a, an empty site in their constituency that isn't being used. And they might have asked that because their constituents are coming to them saying, we might be able to turn that into a playground or that could be used by local businesses or we could turn it into apartments. And that question will require an answer from the minister. So a number of different ways that MLAs can um, represent the views that they are hearing in their local area. Now, despite the Assembly being um, very representative, at least in terms of party political and ideological views, there are issues with representation and some controversies with representation in the Assembly. And the first has to do with gender representation because the Northern Ireland Assembly is a male-dominated legislature. And this is a problem that the Assembly has experienced since its inception in 1998. Now, this problem isn't as bad now as it was in 1998. The proportion of female MLAs um, in 1998 was dire, less than 8%. And that has improved such that we now have 36% of MLAs who are females. But of course, that is not good enough if the, that is not representative of um, the gender balance in Northern Ireland society. You know, we should be striving for 50-50. And Northern Ireland isn't doing as well in that regard as the Welsh or Scottish parliaments in both of those parliaments over 40% of their MLAs are female. So the Northern Ireland Assembly still has um, a long way to go towards achieving um, equal gender representation in the Assembly. Another issue has to do with the designation requirement. So when MLAs are elected to the Assembly, one of the first things they have to do is officially register as a nationalist or a unionist. And if they refuse to register as a nationalist or a unionist, they are referred to as an other. They are designated as an other. Now, this was seen necessary in 1998 because Northern Ireland was just coming out of the troubles. It was during the peace process. Um, and at that time, politics in Northern Ireland seemed to be all about nationalism versus unionism. And a number of checks and balances were introduced into the Assembly to ensure that very important decisions could only be passed with the support of nationalists and unionists. Now, that was in 1998. You know, over two decades later, politics in Northern Ireland appears to be moving away from this idea that is all that it is all about nationalism versus unionism. Um, and if you look at the identity of the wider Northern Ireland population, those who de describe themselves as nationalists and those who describe themselves as unionists, those sections of the population are actually um, declining somewhat. And the largest single identity group in Northern Ireland are those who say, I am neither nationalist nor unionist. Nearly 40% of people in Northern Ireland um, describe themselves as neither nationalist nor unionist. And that is larger than the unionist bloc and it is larger than the nationalist bloc. So there are people who make the case that this system of designation, it's outdated, it's old fashioned, 
And it's also quite divisive because it's giving official recognition to this old battle between nationalism and unionism that does not apply to or does not reverberate with a growing section of the Northern Ireland community who actually say, I'm neither nationalist nor unionist. And there's also a question of fairness as well, because in key votes, so the election of a speaker, um, the passing of the budget, the removal of a minister from office, the votes of nationalist and unionist MLAs are actually more powerful in those votes than the votes of other non-designating MLAs. And that's why, for example, the Alliance Party have been campaigning very um, hard to change the assembly to do away with this designation requirement because they see it as very unfair. So, as a quick summary then, um, the use of, of PRSTV does enhance the representative capacity of the Northern Ireland Assembly. We use multi-member constituencies and that creates a diverse range of views within um, local areas and was also within the Assembly overall. And PRSTV is also a highly proportional or fair system to use. That being said, however, there are issues to do with representation or there are areas where the Assembly could improve. Despite improvements in recent years, um, there is still an underrepresentation of women MLAs in the Northern Ireland Assembly. And secondly, there is also that argument, argument made by some critics that the designation system is outdated, it's old fashioned, it's unfair and it is divisive. So plenty to talk about in terms of the Assembly's representative function. Um, in terms of further resources, you might find this article um, from the Washington Post of interest that talks about whether Northern Ireland society has moved beyond that old idea of nationalism versus unionism and what that might mean for representation in the Assembly. And secondly, you might want to look at the Northern Ireland Assembly Parliamentary Question database. You can click on that link or follow it online and you can see the different range of issues that your MLA might be raising and two ministers in the assembly. Um, but we will leave it there for now. Thanks very much for your attention.